All right, so as we all know, I spend all of my free time at Sephora, and doing so, I have tried so many products, both good and bad. So I thought it'd be super fun and helpful to make a Sephora sale guide of what products I think you should go ahead and try and what products to absolutely avoid at all costs. So hopefully this will help you out whenever you are going on your next Sephora shopping trip. But before we start today's video, I do just want to say these are all my personal opinions. These are products that work for my skin. I do have oily and sensitive skin, so these are just products that have personally worked for me. And I also want to say that I am not getting sponsored by any of these brands i have tried all of these products with my own money so there is going to be nothing but honesty here if the products are good it's because they are good and they work for my skin and if they're bad it's not necessarily because the product's bad it just didn't work for my skin type but let's go ahead and get started we have so many products to get through okay starting off with hair care i have two products from gizu I've been using their hair oil for a while now and I actually do really like it and this bottle has lasted me so long. I love using this after my shower on wet hair and I just run it through the ends and I have just seen the biggest improvement in my hair recently. I've noticed it's a lot more softer, less frizzy, and really shiny so I definitely recommend this product if you haven't tried it. If you've been looking for a hair perfume that's actually going to last in your hair, I always recommend this one. It's just the most perfect clean girl scent and I only put two sprays because a little goes a long way but it smells so good. I feel like I always bring these products up but y'all already know these are my holy grails starting off with the tower 28 spray i feel like this is such a good product for any age range and i feel like this really does help with my redness and acne for the tower 28 serum it's basically the same as the spray but i actually like this one a little better as you can see i ran out but i feel like the serum just absorbs a little bit better into my skin but both of these products are equally as good i love them both so much this is going to be such an unpopular opinion and I already know, but I am not the biggest fan of the watermelon toner. I just feel like I have given it so many chances and every time it just lets me down. It's always amazing the first day I use it, which makes me want to keep using it, but then as I keep using it, it always makes me break out around my mouth and I just don't like that. I actually have tried the new Cloudberry toner and I really do like the consistency. It's very thin, which I feel like is perfect for oily skin. I haven't seen the biggest improvement in my skin, but I have been only using it for a couple of weeks now. But if I had to pick one, I would go with the Cloudberry toner. This is one of my newer skincare favorites. I absolutely love the Ilia face milk. The only thing that's so annoying is the mini size. Nothing ever comes out of it. But this just leaves the most beautiful glow on my skin without looking greasy. And I feel like it's such a good base to put under makeup for that glowy look. Personally, I have a love and hate relationship with the Kosas Mist. I've been using this for a good while now and I just don't know if I see a difference in my skin. I absolutely love the glow and hydration that it leaves on my skin, but over time this is supposed to make your skin look more plump and I just really haven't noticed that. This has been one of my skincare favorites for such a long time. I truly do feel like these are viral for a reason. I use these every day and these just leave the most beautiful glowy base for makeup. I love them. Now I know this is a hot take, but I cannot stand this spray. I never reach for this because I have to spray this 30 times to make my skin feel damp enough. And it is just ridiculous how many times I spray this. But this truly does feel like I'm spraying nothing on my face, which for $30, they really mean it when they say ultra fine spray. So I just don't recommend this. Now this is new to my collection and I absolutely have been loving this moisturizer. This kind of reminds me of the Dew Drops, just in a different font. I do really like this product, but I don't think you need both, but they both leave such a beautiful glow on the skin. 
I have seen so many mixed reviews on the bronzy drops, but I personally love them. The only thing I don't like is how dirty the bottle gets, but these just add the most subtle glow to my skin and I love them. I love that you can build them up or down. I literally only use one drop because that is all I need in the winter time, but this just leaves the prettiest glow on my skin. And we all know that I look like a vampire in the winter, so these are just nice to give me that glow and nice bronze back. I absolutely love these. I used to love the Supergoop Unseen sunscreen until I found other sunscreens that I think are a lot better. I just don't think this is the best option for oily skin. It just leaves my skin feeling so heavy and it's such a thick consistency. And I just really cannot stand the heavy, greasy feeling that it leaves on my skin. So personally, I would not recommend this. These, however, are my favorite sunscreens I have ever tried. First is the Kiehl's Better Screen Sunscreen. I absolutely love this one because it's super lightweight, but it's also a serum. So not only is it SPF 50, but it's supposed to help with fine lines and also help with any uneven skin tone. So this is definitely one of my new favorites. It leaves that beautiful glowy base, but still maintaining that lightweight texture. Now, if I had to pick a favorite sunscreen, it would definitely be this one. This is the most lightweight sunscreen I have ever tried. This literally feels like I'm rubbing water on my skin and it leaves no white cast. And it's also SPF 50, which I really love for summertime. And if you want to feel like you have nothing on your skin, I would definitely go ahead and pick this up. I also love the Kosa sunscreen, but this one I use more in summertime because during the winter, it could just be a little bit too dark for me. But when I want a no makeup makeup day, I will literally put this on and it just leaves the most gorgeous base. I love blending it out with the Tarte Buffer Brush. This brush just helps me get in all the crevices without dirtying my hands too much, so I love it. But as you can see, it's just the most effortless skin tint and it's just so beautiful definitely recommend. I remember this primer being so viral on TikTok, but I personally don't really like it. It's one thing that it holds a lot of bacteria because of the roller, but it also just has such a hard time holding my makeup on. If I'm gonna buy a primer, it's to hold on my makeup, which this one just does not do for me. It does leave a nice glow, but I feel like so many other skincare products can do that for you, so I would not recommend this. This used to be my go-to complexion product, but the more I used it, the more I just figured out that I absolutely do not like it. I'm so sad to say I absolutely love Fenty products, but this stick just was so drying for my face, which honestly surprised me because I have oily skin, but this product left so much dry patches on my skin. As you can see, it really likes to cake up around my eyebrows and also around my mouth, and I have I have continuously tried to work with this product, but it just really does not like my skin. There's so many mixed reviews on the Rare Beauty Under Eye Brightener. I am personally obsessed with this product. I use it every day. It's a very lightweight coverage, but I feel like the trick is definitely less is more with this product. I always blend it out with my ring finger and I only do two dots. And I just love wearing this when I have no makeup on because it just makes the biggest difference in my under eye circles. I feel like some people don't like this product because it is so watery, but I personally love it and I think it looks great if you know how to use it. This is newer to my collection. This is the Makeup by Mario Skin Enhancer. I love pairing this with the Pro Bronzer Brush from Sephora. It's the number 88 one, but this truly melts into my skin and they call it a skin enhancer because I feel like it truly does just enhance my features. It's so subtle, but I absolutely love it. And if you're not good at blending like I am, then this product will be your best friend because it just melts into the skin. I've talked about this before, but this is my all-time favorite pressed powder and I love using the Beauty Blender Pocket Puff to go with it. As you can see, this thing has been severely loved. I don't know what they put in this stuff, but it is truly just magic. It gets rid of all of my oils, it never creases on me, and it's also such a good lightweight option if you don't want your face feeling too heavy. 
Now this is my favorite loose powder. Everyone talks about this, but it's definitely for a reason. This is the Cherry Blossom shade. The only thing I'm going to say is if you're gonna buy this, do not get the mini size. It is so annoying having to take out the product. So save yourself the hassle and just get the full size because you're gonna love it anyway. I used the Hourglass powder brush just to put this onto my skin and this is truly just the most creaseless, beautiful brightening powder that I have ever tried before. I've had the Patrick Ta Bronzer Duo for a while now and I love that it comes with both a cream contour and a powder bronzer. I love pairing it with the contour brush by Patrick Ta. I wouldn't say there's anything life-changing about this bronzer duo, but I do love that it comes with both a cream and bronzer for the price of one, so for that, I do think that it is worth it. This blush is probably one of my worst enemies. It is so gorgeous, but with no pigment. For $40, she is giving dollar store blush which at that point, why are we spending $40 on this blush? Do not buy this. This has been my go-to highlighter recently. I now understand why every girl has this highlighter. This is the Benefit Cookie Highlight and it is just so stunning on any girl that I've seen wear it. It's such a nice shade that's not blinding to the eye. I really don't like those super over the top white highlighters, but I think this one is really subtle in a good way and I love putting it in my inner corners as well. The Urban Decay Space Cowboy Eyeshadow is so viral but I feel like you need to try this. This is absolutely stunning. If you love simple eyeshadow looks and glitter, you will absolutely love this. It just adds an extra oomph to your makeup look and I use this every day. I absolutely love it and I recommend it so much. I know y'all are probably tired of me talking about this, but I feel like no one talks about the Ilia Mascara. I always pair this with my Shishido Eyelash Curler and you can just see the difference that this curler does. For my mascara, I like to use this side and just the difference that this makes in my lashes. I don't know, I will never stop talking about this mascara because it truly is my holy grail. And I just want everyone to experience pretty lashes. The difference is absolutely crazy. You can see why this is my favorite. But if you have not tried this mascara, go and try it right now. It is so good. I feel like I've had this Kosas Airbrow for so long, but I honestly really don't like it. I don't know if it's because I have really stubborn brows or just no product comes out, but this does nothing for my brows. And I feel like this really doesn't make my brows hold all day, but again, I don't know if it's just because I have really stubborn brows. Moving on to body care, I recently picked up the Way St. Bart's Body Cream, and everyone was saying that this smells so good, so I was finally like, okay, let me go try and smell it. And let me tell you, they were not lying. This smells like heaven, and it leaves me so moisturized. I would definitely try this. Of course, I have to recommend the Sol de Janeiro perfumes. It it honestly just depends on preference. I think a lot of the smells are very nice, but my all-time favorite is definitely 62, but I definitely think that these are worth the money. Moving on to the best part, which is lip care. I have been absolutely loving both of the Jisoo Shimmer Lip Oils. This is the watermelon sugar one, and it is just absolutely stunning. It kind of smells like the Glow Recipe watermelon line to me, and this just leaves the most prettiest shine on my lips. This is just the original Honey Shimmer one. I really do like this one as well. I know a lot of people like to think of it as vegetable oil, but personally, every time I put it on, I never have a problem with yellow lips. I love this lip oil. This is the old formula, which I do prefer the new formula better, but this is still such a pretty gloss. When I said this wasn't worth the hype, so many of y'all came for me. I absolutely am obsessed with this lip oil, but for the price point, it runs out so incredibly fast. But besides that, it is the most gorgeous lip oil and it just has the most perfect pink color. I love it. These lip masks are my absolute holy grail. This is the cherry blossom one. It's discontinued now, but it is so gorgeous. But honestly, any of the flavors, I think are what they're called, are so nice and hydrating. 
This is the new cotton candy scent and I'm actually really surprised that this is one of my new favorites. It smells so good and looks pretty on the lips. I feel like I don't really have to explain myself with this one. Everyone knows that these Summer Fridays lip balms are amazing. This is the new birthday cake butter balm. I really like this one a lot more than the pink sugar one. This one has more of a peachy undertone and the pink sugar is more pink and of course it has glitter in it. Again, I feel like it all just comes down to preference. I prefer the Sweet Mint Butter Balm just because I don't really like color on my lips, but any of the shades are perfect. And the smell of this one smells like Thin Mint Girl Scout cookies, which I just am obsessed with. The Dior Lip Oil is a tricky one because although it is really pretty, it's also $40. I really do love the applicator, but I really wouldn't consider this a lip oil. It is more on the thicker side, but the only time I would buy this is if there is a sale going on. This is my most recent lippy that I've added to my collection. This is the Tower 28 Lip Softy. I honestly didn't think I was gonna like this as much as I do, but it's just the cutest little baby pink lip gloss. I love the applicator, it's so different from what I'm normally used to, but I really do think it just adds the prettiest subtle pink to your lips. I absolutely love this and I would recommend it. I don't really hear anyone talk about the YSL Candy Glaze anymore, but th this is truly one of the most glossiest glosses that I own. It is definitely more on the pricier side, but I would 100% say it's worth it. These look like glass lips, it is so stunning. If you haven't tried it, I think the sale is the perfect time to. But yeah, guys, that was officially all of my 2024 Sephora sale recommendations. Hopefully this helped some of you guys with choosing what goodies to pick out from Sephora. And I do just want to say this is what works for my skin. And I absolutely love all of these products. Again, I'm not sponsored by any of these brands. So all of these products have just been trial and error with my skin. I do have oily and sensitive skin. And I absolutely love all of these products. I hope you all enjoyed today's video. And definitely comment down below if you're going to shop the Sephora sale and what you will be picking up. Because I would love to know and also if you happen to stay this far throughout the video definitely comment this emoji so i know who stayed to the end but i love you all so so much i hope to see you all in my next video and i hope you all have an amazing rest of your day bye